This is a 7 News weather alert. I'm going to give you an update. There is another tornado warning that is in effect right now. This does include Essex County. Uh, you're looking at the Salem area. This goes uh, just to the north side of the city of Boston as well. It says bright red polygon. This is in effect until 145. National Weather Service uh, indicating enough rotation uh, to pop that tornado warning. This does uh, just uh, include uh, Chelsea, Winthrop, Revere, Everett, Malden, Saugus, Lynn. Uh, area of rotation watching close is very close to Revere uh, at this point here. We can go over to the velocity side of things and show you what's going on with this tornado warning that's now in effect across uh, Essex County uh, and you know all the way to the north side of the city of Boston until 145. Want to zoom in and show that little bit of rotation uh, that is quite a bit there now uh, in the Revere area. Uh, you're seeing some of those brighter pinks uh, matching up with a little bit of that green on that uh, eastern side there. Uh, that is a uh, concerning because we do have enough rotation at times for these to spin up a brief passing tornado. So we're watching for that uh, along uh, Essex County. Uh, this does include uh, parts of uh, Suffolk County too, north central Suffolk County. Uh, this also would include uh, radar indicated rotation, which is the potential for that tornado there. Uh, dangerous storm will be near Lynn and Nahant around 105, Swampscott around 120, Salem around 125, Beverly up about 145. So this is once again another tornado warning that is in effect uh, for parts of Suffolk County and Essex County until 145. This is a radar indicated tornado, nothing confirmed on the ground, but you are looking at that significant rotation uh, close to the Revere area right now and very close uh, to Route 1A. So you kind of track that out from this ongoing time and you can see about 10 minutes from now, you're close to Lynn, 15 minutes now, uh, Swamp's got uh, up through the Salem area and over to Beverly too about 30 minutes away. I want to take a closer look uh, just north of the city of Boston where you do see some of this rotation very close uh, to Revere. I mean, it was just several summers ago uh, we had that tornado that did go through Revere. Not quite seeing, you know, as much of a couplet, meaning, you know, some bright greens uh, versus the bright reds, but there is rotation in a substantial amount at this point, and that is cause for concern uh, because once you start talking about uh, rotation in these thunderstorms in a tropical environment, it can happen fast. It can tighten up fast, you can briefly get a tornado uh, that comes down, does some damage, and lifts up. So that would be the concern for the potential uh, damage in a potential tornado, which includes the Revere area, looking at Franklin Park, uh, down 107, 18, right along the coastline. Uh, this goes through Nahant, too. And even if you don't get the tornado, uh, it does look like there's sustainable winds uh, aloft around 40 to 50 miles an hour that gets pushed down to the ground, and you could even see a gust uh, in excess of you know 50 or 60 miles an hour. So another concern on that end would be the strong winds. And there's that velocity, about 50 miles an hour, as I just mentioned, that's aloft uh, in the air. So this is a tornado warning in effect for Essex County for the cell that is moving off to the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. The tornado warning is for that possibly a tornadic thunderstorm that has shown sign of rotation about close to Revere, uh, moving in toward Nahant and eventually up to the Salem area, uh, back up toward uh, eventually near Manchester by the sea in a little bit here. So we take a look at that. Not only are you dealing uh, with a tremendous amount uh, of uh, instability to the atmosphere, it does look like it is uh, very close here. Um uh, to, you know, just north and east of Boston, Chelsea, Everett, uh, Revere area, uh, up into the Ipswich area, Hamilton area, eventually there as well. So we continue to track. Uh, looks like uh, that is going to be moving toward the coastline over the next uh, half hour or so. So it's that Route 1 stretch uh, north of the city of Boston uh, and back to the Chelsea, uh, Everett, Revere areas, points north and east. So that's going to be the focus here where you just kind of sit on these velocity scans and you watch them closely. We've seen these tornado warnings occur back across eastern New York earlier this morning. We saw it occur in southern Worcester County uh, this morning as well. And that was prompted by the rotation that was strong uh, back uh, in into northeastern Connecticut and looking at some of those scans matching up where the velocities were really strong and tight, uh, the, the rotation was tight, you do have tree damage out that way. So it's conceivable that
Flint, there was a brief tornado that touched down in Thompson, Connecticut. Uh, that's what prompted the tornado warning uh, back into southern Worcester County earlier. And it's constantly this back edge that we're following going through eastern Massachusetts now that will be capable of producing a brief tornado. So here we go in the Revere area again, moving into Nahant. Uh, you see almost this little light shading of green there. It's kind of the gray area, uh, getting almost a little bit of a notch coming in too with some stronger velocities on that 1A side. This is the area that uh, focusing on at the moment, which is the east of Franklin Park, very close to 1A, right along that coastline. I mean, you get into like a Revere Beach area, watching that very closely. Nahant as well as this rotating part of the thunderstorm continues its journey off uh, to the northeast. Radar indicated uh, rotation at this point. Uh, nothing confirmed by National Weather Service as of yet, but is, we're susceptible uh, to these brief tornadoes in a tropical environment that we're in today. And when I say tropical environment, this is the remnants of Fred that are moving on through. And with the remnants of Fred moving on through, we certainly have had copious amounts of moisture. You get the instability. You get a lot of rotation to the atmosphere a lot of spin to the atmosphere uh, as we continue to watch this move off to the northeast. So let's recap the areas under the tornado warning. Again, this is where we see uh, some of these red polygons showing up. This includes the Salem area uh, all, all the way up and down that Route 1 stretch. Uh, this storm is moving off to the northeast at about 15 miles an hour. So uh, it's moving, but it's also, you know, it's kind of taking its time too. It's not racing off at like 30 or 40 miles an hour. I want to go back to the velocity. Take a wider look at what's going on in general up through the North Shore to see if we can find any more rotation there. Uh, and you can see that you get some of these bright pinks showing up. There's your rotation. Let's zoom into that spot uh, right there, a little bit uh, close to 1A again in Chelsea, Everett, Revere. Uh, if we go north here, up 107 in 1A, you can see some straight line wind damage potential too in Swampscott as you do have some of these bright pinks showing up. Uh, Saugus area, Lynn, Nahant, uh, farther off to the northwest, uh, northeast I should say, all under that tornado warning. This goes up into the Marblehead area uh, as well. Just checking some of the scans here. Uh, you can see a little bit of rotation showing up uh, for sure. At times, it's a little stronger out near the Revere area, and that's the part of the cell that concerned with that there may be uh, some uh, a brief ramp up uh, in the rotation enough to produce a tornado. So this is moving off to the northeast. Uh, this is going to be approaching Lynn probably within about 10 minutes or so uh, looking through the Nahant area as well and then there's some more strong winds aloft even north of there. Danvers, Beverly, Hamilton, Ipswich uh, up into the Rowley area. You're not under the tornado warning Hamilton and Ipswich but we are watching that severe thunderstorm warning uh, that's capable of producing some damage and wind gusts in your area. The main concern is going to be with this rotation uh, that's close to the Revere area. It's now moving just north. I can see this moving toward Lynn uh, up into the Swampscott area. So we're going to be watching this very closely as that rotation in those locations uh, does show signs uh, of being at least strong on one, on one side, which you want to see or what you don't want to see. I mean, you don't want to see that 56 velocity match up with, you know, strong velocities in the other way. Uh, but when you start talking about 56 in one direction and then some on the opposite direction just west of there, it's indication of some pretty good rotation. So this is the storm that we have to watch closely as you're going in the opposite direction uh, with some of the wind speeds and going in the opposite direction uh, at a fairly wide range too. I mean, 56 mile per hour gust, even if you don't get uh, a tornado out of this from Nahant up to Swampscott, uh, you are going to be dealing with some strong wind gusts, perhaps damaging wind gusts to 50 or 60 miles an hour that would be capable uh, of downing a tree. But the overall th uh, theme here is to watch the rotation that's now moving into Lynn and moving off to the northeast. About four minutes away from Lynn, uh, about 17 minutes away from Salem, and about 19 minutes away from Marblehead. And that's a track with this moving off to the northeast at about 15 miles an hour. Torrential rains with this system, too. This is not something you want to go out and, you know, try to find a funnel or look at it. You want to be in your safe space. If you're in Revere, if you're in Lynn, if you're in Nahant, good idea to get into an interior room, lowest level of the building that you're in, and away from any doors and windows. Because when you start exhibiting rotation in these tropical systems, you quickly can ramp it up into a quick spin-up tornado. It might only last a couple of minutes, uh, but it can produce damage. And, you know, unfortunately, you folks in Revere know all too well uh, just a couple of summers ago, or several summers ago, of what happened. Not saying that that's exactly what's going to happen uh, this go-around, but you got to be guarding against the potential uh, of a tornado quickly 
touching down and then lifting up, and that's why there is a tornado warning that's in effect across portions of northeastern Massachusetts, which includes Revere, uh, Lynn, Salem, uh, Nahant. Uh, soaking rains, flooding rains, tropical downpours, we've seen that back into Worcester County. We're seeing that again now lining up along Route 1. So if you do not have to go anywhere, do not go anywhere. Uh, this is the kind of rain that's going to flood out the roadways pretty quickly, uh, and that includes you folks that are not in the tornado warning. Obviously, if you're in the tornado warning, you shouldn't be going anywhere anyway. You should be hunkering down uh, as the storm system goes on through and passes on by. Looking at the, uh, the, the velocity scans here, uh, taking another look at how fast the winds are aloft and are we tightening up rotation? So some rotation here on the backside. Uh, more concerning right now, I mean, you're seeing some velocities over Swampscott of about 60 miles an hour. So again, even if you don't get a tornado, you're watching these winds come down out of the clouds uh, at about 60 miles an hour, and that's going to be capable of producing down trees and down power lines. That cell uh, continues to move off to the northeast toward Marblehead. And then on the backside, there is some rotation in here that we've got to keep a careful eye on as it heads up Route 1 uh, and 1A across northeastern Massachusetts. So all eyes on what's going on in northeastern Massachusetts. Uh, the tornado warning is in effect until 145 as the cell continues its movement off to the north and to the east. Again, the most uh, severe part of the cell looks like it's right across Lynn at the moment. So if you are in Lynn, you should be in your safe spot. Uh, interior room, uh, lowest level of the uh, house, the building you're in. Uh, that's where we see some of the strongest rotation with the storm system. Uh, and also in Swampscott, you're looking at some of the strongest winds aloft. So as I mentioned before, even if there's not a tornado touching down, there is the potential for some damaging wind gust as we have a lot of strong winds uh, about 2,000 feet up, measured about 60 miles an hour on the velocity scan. So we've got to continue to keep an eye on that. Have you guys, uh, Brandon and Mark, have we seen any reports from those areas coming on in? Not seeing any damage, not seeing any damage. We, we've been checking online, you know, everywhere we can find. But, you know, you've been talking about just how high these winds are up to, to 60 miles per hour and how it's hitting the North Shore like Lynn and Swampscott. I mean, that's right on the water. And you were saying there's certainly a possibility of downed trees. Um, maybe this is a silly question, but right on the water there, could we see some storm surge from this? No, you're going you're to be pushing this in the opposite direction. Uh, if there's any straight line winds, you push that off. Storm surge is, is generally for, you know, nor'easters or, uh, you know, bigger storm system hurricanes like the one we may experience uh, Sunday into Monday. So all boating interest, you know, you don't want to be caught in a thunderstorm as is, so, you know, or on the beach. So if you're out there, uh, you know, at the coastline, do not venture out in something like this. Uh, you know, can, if you do get a tornado, you, know, you can get one over water too. It's just a water spout. Uh, seeing indications of that rotation very close to Lynn uh, at the moment here. Uh, back across this area of 107, 129, and then 1A. This goes all the way to the coastline, uh, very close to Nahan too. Take a wider view, and you can see where some of the strongest winds aloft are at the moment. Salem, Marblehead, right around 129. This goes through Cape Ann. Uh, this is also right up along, uh, in, well inside Route 1. Uh, uh, but in this area, you're looking at velocities aloft, running about 40, 50, even 60 miles an hour. So it's the velocities that are aloft, 2,000, a couple thousand feet up, that are showing the potential for wind damage in terms of strong wind gusts. And you're also seeing a little bit of rotation on the backside of the storm system. And it's tough in these tropical environments because even if you're not seeing at the moment uh, a radar indicated tornado, if you have strong enough rotation, it doesn't take all that long uh, to briefly produce a spin up tornado that might only last like five minutes and then your damage is done it lifts up and that's it uh, i'm pretty sure we saw that in northeastern connecticut earlier this morning seeing some tree damage uh, in thompson connecticut northeastern connecticut there that matched up where there was a brief burst of intense velocities uh, that were kind of a couplet meaning go pretty strong but in opposite directions uh, it also matched up on the radar where their correlation coefficient was showing a little bit of leaves and debris up into the air and that's what helped prompt that tornado tornado warning that did go into Worcester County, and it's constantly been this back edge of the storm system, these last cells that have produced these tornado warnings, if not possible tornado earlier today, whether it's been across eastern New York or now moving uh, through Worcester County earlier and then back into northeastern Connecticut and now moving up across the north shore of, uh, of Massachusetts here, just north of the city of Boston. So you're watching this cell and this tornado warning that's in effect until 145 north of Boston, Salem. Uh, take cover there. Want to zoom back in. Even if you do not get a tornado, this thunderstorm is certainly capable.
capable of producing damaging wind gusts as well as torrential rains. I mean, we are dealing likely with some street flooding too uh, in these areas, your Saugus, your Salem, your Swampscott, your Marblehead. Uh, Marblehead seeing some strong winds aloft, maybe gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour. If we can put this into motion, you can kind of get a general sense of some rotation uh, to the atmosphere against the velocity scan. You know, the radar is a wonderful tool. Not only do you see the rain, but you can actually match things up and see, you know, which way the wind is blowing in the clouds and how strong it is, you know, at these different levels or even right below. Um, cloud level, you know, where the raindrops are falling down. And if you start seeing these velocities in opposite directions over a short distance, you know you have a lot of rotation. You may be in trouble with a perhaps a uh, touchdown tornado. We did see some of this rotation uh, back in the Saugus and Revere area. This continues to move off to the northeast right now. It looks fairly broad at the moment, but as I mentioned before, in these tropical environments, it doesn't take long for this to go from a broad rotation all the way up sudden to a strong rotation, really produce a tornado uh, and then lift back up. And that would be the concern, uh, especially with this area right now on the southwest side uh, of Salem. This is down across Route 129. I think this is where probably most of the rotation is showing up uh, at the moment as it moves off to the northeast. So Salem, uh, just take cover at the moment. You're going to be there. Maybe, you know, maybe give it another 10, 15, 20 minutes in your area for this to pass on by. Chelsea and Everett, it looks like the worst of the storm is now north of you. Uh, so you will see the worst of the storm progress. Uh, from south to north, really from southwest to northeast, uh, over the next 45 minutes or so. Manchester by the sea, getting some soaking rains, and then just west of there, there's your tornado warning. Again, this red polygon is where the tornado warning is in effect until 145, including Marblehead, Salem, up into Beverly, uh, southeast side of Danvers here, as we track the rotation with this storm, uh, and plenty of strong winds uh, aloft as well. So as I mentioned before, even if you do not see or do not get a tornado to touch down, uh, this thunderstorm has uh, every capability of uh, producing some damaging wind gust, as we have seen quite a few winds uh, about 40 to 50 miles an hour aloft. So that is, you know, another concern. Not only is there the tornado warning that's in effect, but there's also a severe thunderstorm warning uh, that's in effect for that potential, exactly of those winds gusting perhaps to 60 miles an hour, maybe even some small hail. So we are looking in, on the lookout uh, for some damaging wind gusts up through the North Shore. It doesn't necessarily have to be tornado uh, produced. You can get them, you know, wind damage too, which is the straight line winds from a thunderstorm, but really kind of watching multiple factors at this point. You had some rotation coming out of the Revere area uh, just about uh, 10 to 15 minutes ago. How prompt the tornado warning that's now in effect until uh, 145. Uh, some of that rotation very close to the Peabody area, Marblehead, you're seeing some strong winds aloft too. You're also seeing the threat of severe weather moving off to the northeast. And you see these velocities popping up around 50 miles an hour. Occasionally, I've seen it near 60 miles an hour. That's the radar going out, sensing you know, how fast the wind is and saying, all right, you know, a couple thousand feet up, you're pushing winds out at 50 miles an hour. You get into a tropical downpour. Those winds are coming down to the ground and pushing out. So you can see these pockets of wind damage for sure, even though you don't get a tornado. Still concerned, too, uh, that we do have the potential of severe weather just producing those straight line winds. But rotation, it's been broad uh, over the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, it was a little stronger back toward the Revere area. We're now moving off to the northeast. Uh, aside from the strong wind threat and the tornado threat, uh, the other concern is for some torrential rains. And we have seen that too, uh, indeed, over the last uh, couple of hours move across much of the Commonwealth, including uh, northeastern Massachusetts. There's another look at the radar. You can see that across 127 here, uh, north of the city of Boston up through the Salem area, as well as 129 the soaking rains. So you're dealing with a couple of things going on. Obviously, the severe thunderstorm warning, tornado warning, but you're also dealing with tropical downpours capable of producing flash flooding. So we've got uh, multiple concerns along the North Shore at this time as the storm system moves uh, to the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. Fortunately, once we get beyond uh, this batch that's now north of Boston, not that you're 100% rain free. I think the severe threat, though, does start to lower uh, for the rest of this afternoon. And as we get into the afternoon, even a few breaks of sunshine out there. But we got the warmth, we got the humidity. The issue is the tropical air mass in place. Uh, it, this, the winds aloft are kind of strong. They curve, they change directions going up. That gives you the spin of the atmosphere. And it's very common in these tropical systems. And when I say tropical systems, this is the remnants of Fred. Uh, you go back to when it was a tropical storm, tropical depression, moved through the Carolinas. It produced over 30 tornado warnings. It produced tornadic activity that did damage down the south. We're not seeing it that 
extensive here, but there's still some lingering rotation and spin to the atmosphere that is capable of producing uh, tornadic thunderstorms. So we keep a close eye on it. Uh, there's likely a brief touchdown tornado in northeastern Connecticut earlier this morning around 10 o'clock. Uh, that rotation uh, did weaken a bit as it worked uh, its way into Worcester County, but that prompted the tornado warning in Worcester County, and you're now likely seeing this rotation across the North Shore uh, continue. Let's go back to that, uh, that, that loop of the rotation, because it gives you a general sense of idea when you go in the velocity scans here, what we're looking at. Some of that uh, near the Salem area, but it's very broad at this point, which means it's more spread out. You, nothing distinct is popping up at this point. What you would look for is some of these bright pinks, you know, right next to these you know, bright greens, and that would indicate winds in opposite directions at a fast speed. You see some general rotation, but you're not seeing these bright greens next to these bright reds at the moment. So that's good, unfortunately, in the tropical environment that we're in with the high dew points, the leftover tropical moisture. Uh, that can change rapidly, like you did see across northeastern Connecticut earlier this morning. Marblehead, some strong winds aloft right now. We'll back it out, show you that loop again on a wider view. I just want to show you some of that rotation that started close to the Revere area near that 1A, you know, very close to uh, Revere, Revere Beach Parkway, those areas as it moved off to the northeast. You can see that a uh, little bit of a spin popping up and then moving off to the northeast. That's what's prompted, uh, has prompted the severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning is these strong winds aloft and obviously the rotation uh, that we saw on the radar. Let's go back over to the rain mode. I want to show you the soaking rains where that tornado warning is. Uh, that tornado warning is along the north shore. I would say Chelsea, Everett, Revere, uh, you're pretty much in the clear at this moment. Uh, that thunderstorm, the worst of it, is now off uh, to the northeast of you. And just taking a closer look at some of the strong winds aloft, I would say it's Marblehead, Beverly, Manchester by the sea, uh, under the highest risk of some strong winds aloft. Rotation looks fairly broad at this point. What we were watching in Revere and over to Lynn, uh, a little bit of that rotation getting close to the Salem and Peabody area. You're under the tornado warning just uh, to be safe. You want to be in your safe spot, lowest level of the building you're in, you know, interior room away from the doors and windows. So we're going to continue to keep an eye uh, on that. Uh, we'll also look at correlation coefficients just to see if the radar has picked up anything aloft in the air. Uh, there's a little bit of it showing up with the tornado in northeastern Connecticut earlier this morning, went into Webster, and then after that, it kind of disappeared. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of that uh, at the moment uh, in this tornado area what you want to see is generally you know a lot of this dark red kind of being uniform and that indicates that there's you know limited amounts of of debris you know you get the edge of the thunderstorms that's just kind of some some noise out there but uh do look at that again we also play a big role in looking at the velocity uh, on the radar great tool you know not only does it track the rates of rain and how heavy the precipitation is but it tracks the velocity and uh you can see that little round of rotation going from revere as it went loop through Salem, you know, the other Peabody area, uh, up into Beverly. Looks pretty general, looks pretty uniform at this point, uh, with winds, though, still gusting 50 or 60 miles an hour. So even if you don't get a tornado to touch down, this thunderstorm is capable of producing wind gusts near 60 miles an hour, and that's cause for concern as well, uh, because you can get straight light wind damage. You know, it doesn't have to be rotating wind. If it's just straight out and it's fast enough, uh, you can certainly get some power outages, some down trees and power lines. So take heed of the warning. You know, you want to be in your safe spot. Uh, we'll keep you updated here as the, the radar you know, continues to roll on through and show us what's going on. You can see some of the stronger winds on Marblehead right now, 53 mile per hour, uh, gust aloft. Salem, uh, you're dealing with some of those strong winds too. And just to the west of there, there has been some general rotation uh, near the Peabody area. Haven't seen any reports coming out. Uh, have you guys heard of any reports? Are we getting flooding reports, any damage reports? Uh, at all across the area, Mock and Brandon? Chris, we're looking for that now. I am on the MEMA power outage map, about 1,800 people currently without power now. And as you kind of take us through uh, the path with this tornado warning, is it common to have, we had that tornado warning that was canceled out of Worcester earlier in the central part of the state, and we see that obviously moving to the eastern part of the state. Is that common to have multiple tornado warnings pretty much within an hour, an hour and a half of each other? Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but you start getting into these remnant tropical systems, and it's a whole different ball game. And unfortunately, it is common in a tropical system when it starts to try to wind on down, uh, even though it loses its tropical depression or tropical storm status, it still has the rotation to it. It still has a ton of tropical moisture with it. And with that 
that in place and the winds aloft still kind of strong, it's conducive to produce tornado warnings. So what we watched early this morning were a couple of tornado warnings in eastern New York. I mentioned during the morning show how this may translate farther east and into New England on the backside of that storm system. And we're watching the backside move on through as of now. This was initially out there in Worcester County about two hours ago. It likely produced a brief tornado in northeastern Connecticut. You saw some of that rotation come out of northeastern Connecticut into Worcester County uh, near the Webster and Oxford area. That rotation did weaken a bit and then once it did weaken a bit, uh, you, that tornado warning was dropped for Worcester County. But you got to keep a close eye on this because the general sense of the storm is to still be conducive for areas of rotation. And you see these areas of rotation briefly kind of ramp on up and the tornado warning will come out for the potential potential of a brief tornado that's going to touch down. So we see that, uh, you know, time and time again so far through the morning now into early this afternoon as you get that broad rotation north of the city of Boston. Again, Chelsea, Everett, Revere, I think you're in the clear on this one. Uh, some of the rotation that we're following now is more focused uh, back near the Salem area uh, and then points north and points uh, uh, east at the moment, uh, really inside Route 1 and very close uh, to the coastline here. Even if you don't get that tornado, as I mentioned before, you see these bright bursts of some colors, these pink showing up. That does indicate the potential of some damaging wind gusts, and that's why the severe thunderstorm warning is also into effect. So let's recap on where the tornado warning is uh, at the moment here. Again, the southern edges of that tornado warning, uh, you're kind of continuing to, just to see that chip away, uh, really from the Salem area points north and west uh, up into the Wenham area, uh, points south and east toward Gloucester. Uh, this goes along Route 133, north and west of Gloucester. Uh, you're also looking at it probably close to uh, 128 uh, coming out of Gloucester as well. So this is the area that the tornado warning is going to be focused for until 145. So we continue to watch some of this rotation move off, uh, develop and move off uh, to the northeast. Not racing off to the northeast, moving at 15 miles an hour. Uh, so you time that out for you and, you know, you you got to give it another uh, 15 minutes or half hour to completely get offshore. And that's why the tornado warning goes into effect until 1.45. So you continue to examine uh, some of the rotation in the storm uh, to really get a sense of what's going on, you know, where's the worst part of it, uh, where is it most likely to produce a tornado. And I would say, you know, this kind of little curly cue on the back side here where there's a little bit of rotation. That would be the area to watch. Moving into Beverly shortly, eventually into Essex as well. So all of this area in that tornado warning uh, until about 145. Or there you get up toward Essex and Gloucester. Uh, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning in those locations. So carefully watching this, we'll go back to the velocity scan. We'll see what's going on in terms of the winds aloft. As I mentioned before, I mean, once you get out of it, you know, Boston West, we're in the clear here. Uh, it's really focused along the North Shore. Uh, let's put this into motion, Josh. Just want to show you what's going on. Uh, in terms of what it looked like. Briefly seeing a little bit of a, a rotation close to Revere and Lynn, that pushed on through, and you can see these bursts of some stronger winds aloft, and that's why there's also severe thunderstorm warning in effect. So right now, you know, you're watching this, and it continues to chug along to the northeast. Uh, we got some, you know, 15 minutes, half hour or so, uh, where the threat, I think, is, is there for at least the potential of a quick spin up. We saw that in southern Worcester County. It's a tropical environment. It can happen quickly. The other thing to watch for is the soaking rains and we've really seen that as more of a widespread threat uh, than damaging winds so far today. It's been the flooding of rains. So not only do you get into a situation where you do have to watch uh, the chance of a brief tornado, but you also watch more widespread flooding downpours. Worcester County, two to four inches of rain earlier, uh, did have uh, uh, back across that area, uh, did have um, flash flood warning uh, in place too. I believe there's another tornado warning that popped up. Uh, this is for this cell. Uh, just to the south and east of Lemonster. So yeah, another tornado warning that's now in effect, if we can get a velocity scan on that, south of Lemonster, uh, that tornado warning goes into effect uh, and will be into effect uh, likely for about a half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, you're watching some of the uh, scans here coming out of Worcester County, Clinton into the Boylston area. That's where you have rotation on the radar there as well. Uh, so this is one of those afternoons, it's one of those days uh, where you're still seeing some of these thunderstorms. Thank you.
capable of producing enough rotation uh, that the tornado warnings are popping up. This one, the latest tornado warning, that is out in the Clinton area. Uh, the strongest rotation right there in Clinton, uh, back in the Lan uh, Lancaster area, uh, heading out toward Bolton. Uh, this is moving off to Harvard uh, as well, off to the northeast. There's your storm scan on that tornado warning uh, as it is moving off to the northeast at this point. Uh, looks like this tornado warning does go into effect now and will stay into effect uh, until probably for at least a half an hour, uh, if not, yep, half hour, uh, it's 145. So dual tornado warnings at this point. Uh, one is close to the coastline uh, across northeastern Massachusetts, and this is the latest tornado warning that is now in effect. This one is into Worcester County, uh, strongest rotation I can see on the radar, uh, very close to the Clinton area. Let's zoom in there. So if you are in Worcester County, uh, you do want to keep an eye on this. You want to be in your safe spot too, because the radar is now existing exhibiting rotation uh, with this lone thunderstorm that's developed across northern Worcester County. There's Boylston. It's just north of there. You see some of these greens very close to the reds. That rotation there continues to show uh, signs of, you know, the curvature that, you know, curvature to the thunderstorm that you don't want to see because these are quickly uh, advancing off to the northeast and capable of producing uh, brief tornadoes. So we got that one storm right there. Correlation coefficient, a little bit of a difference showing up uh, to the the west of the Clinton area, so we've got to keep a close eye uh, on that. Let's zoom in even farther there. So Clinton, you have to be in your safe spot at this point. We've got the rotation on the radar. Uh, you got a little bit of a correlation coefficient showing some uh, signs of maybe a little bit of debris uh, aloft. You know, you can happen too with some just some gusty winds, uh, so not necessarily a confirmation, but uh, there is some indication of rotation too. Uh, so we kind of match that up and we carefully watch this as it moves off to the northeast here. Clinton, uh, right along that 110 stretch. This moves off to the east, uh, to the northeast as well. So that's the second tornado warning that is in effect uh, across the area at the moment. So we got dual tornado warnings right now. One in Clinton, we've got to watch that rotation very closely uh, in the Clinton area, as well as moving into uh, Lancaster, um, back up into the Bolton area. Uh, that tornado warning, that will continue until 145. I uh, want to look back at the tornado warning farther off to the east uh, there across the North Shore. That rotation does not look uh, as uh, formidable right now. It looks more like a straight-lined wind damage issue. So I would say out of the two storms that are being watched, the rotation right now is uh, strongest back out across the Clinton area. So there's a severe thunderstorm warning, a uh, tornado warning in effect for that severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located right there in Clinton, as we were ma mentioning, matching up with the radar, uh, moving uh, off to the northeast at 20 miles an hour. So the storm track on this one in Clinton is to the northeast at 20 miles an hour. So you follow that path in some of the areas that will be under uh, the threat include Acton, Maynard, Littleton, Air, Harvard, Harvard, Boxborough. Uh, by Boxborough, we're talking about 145 there. So carefully monitoring, obviously, these two cells. You got dual tornado warnings, one north of the city of Boston, uh, one across northern Worcester County at the moment. Uh, right near the Clinton area is the center of circulation that we're worried about uh, in terms of conducive uh, to rotating thunderstorm producing a tornado, following that off to the northeast at about 20 miles an hour. So certainly a busy afternoon. Again, not, not typical for tropical uh, systems when they make landfall and they go even inland, you know, two, three days later, uh, the winds are off, it's still curving, they're still rotating, and you still see the potential of brief tornadoes, and we're still seeing that potential at the moment here in two spots, one up through the North Shore and then one out into northern Worcester County at this time. Uh, have you guys had any reports of wind damage come in at, at, at all? Have you guys seen any reports? Chris, we, ha we haven't seen anything on social media yet. We're still working to gather details, but I, I have a question as far as what you were saying between the two tornadoes tornado warnings right now, just so our audience is clear right now, there's one for Essex, Middlesex, that's one, and then also for Worcester. Um, out of the two tornado warnings, which do you believe is the more significant one? Obviously, everyone in both of these areas need to hunker down, figure out a safe place to ride out the storm, get away from windows. You know, a, a lot of people may be out and about on the roads right now, so I'm just wondering out of the two uh, significant storms, as you see on, on our screen here, we're kind of telling you exactly what you need to do um, for this tornado warning 
morning. Which is the most significant right now? So we, we saw some rotation that was strong in the North Shore storm uh, about a uh, half hour ago or so. You know, it continues to kind of go back and forth with some of the rotation and its strength. I would say right now, uh, the one that's out in Clinton in northern Worcester County, the rotation uh, has been briefly stronger here uh, about 10 minutes ago, you know, versus what we've seen in the last 10 minutes uh, across the North Shore. Obviously, there's rotation enough in both storms to keep the tornado warning uh, in effect. So, you know, essentially what you had just mentioned is exactly right. Uh, you know, both locations have to take it, you know, seriously. Uh, unfortunately, you know, in these tropical environments, you get some rotation to show up in these thunderstorms. They can quickly produce a tornado. It might only last a couple of minutes, but it does the damage and then it lifts back north. So at the moment, uh, the dueling tornado warnings that are in effect, one north of the city of Boston, as well as one out across northern Worcester County. Let's get back to the velocity scans. I uh, want to show you what's going on with that. And this is what we look at to find out where that rotation is. You're still seeing some rotation up in the Beverly area. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, heading toward that 128, coming west of Gloucester. Well, here we are, you know, right on 128. You see some stronger winds aloft uh, in Beverly, uh, just on the north side of the city, but then all of a sudden there's a big dip in the wind strength. So that does indicate that there is some rotation out that way. Tornado warning in effect north of Boston and then you look at the rotation that's out in the Clinton area uh, and that is conducive to keep an eye on careful eye on that uh, as well so you're one tornado warning north of Boston one out in Clinton I will say this the last scan here you know if you don't want severe weather which we don't uh, you like to see more of a separation of some of these lighter reds pushing this way some of these greens if not void of green uh, pushing that way because that decreases the intensity of the rotation and you know the velocity couplets as we call it you Know, winds going in different directions uh, at a fast speed over a short period of time. Uh, so it looks like on the last scan or two, the the, the rotation's not quite as strong uh, as it was, you know, 10, 15 minutes ago back near Clinton, 5, 10, 15 minutes ago back near Clinton. So we'll look for the possibility to see if there's any damage with that storm on to Clinton. But now you got to watch the storm, you know, at least for the next 15 or, or, or 15 to 20 minutes here uh, to see if the rotation does, you know, go away eventually or does it tighten back up and we would be capable of producing another possible tornado. So we're watching this one here uh, very closely. Let's zoom in to some of these roadways uh, basically coming out of Bolton. There's your 117. Uh, 117 uh, meeting up with 110. So this is the area between Lancaster and uh, basically Bolton that you're going to watch closely and points just south. Uh, this is moving off to the northeast at 20 miles an hour. This storm here uh, had so shown signs of rotation uh, about 10 or 15 minutes ago, which prompted that second tornado warning out there uh, in northern Worcester County. So we're going to watch this continue to go off to the northeast here. Uh, you can see on 117 where you get some of the brighter reds and then you get some of these greens back here. They're not very vivid. They're not very bright. So the rotation may be not quite as strong as what it was, uh, let's say, 5 or 10, 15 minutes ago, uh, but it's still there. So you still watch it. There's still a tornado warning in effect, and it's the characteristic of these storms where they can ramp up quickly, they can ramp down quickly uh, too, or fade out quickly uh, as well. So this is something to watch going up 110 and 117 out there into northern Worcester County. Let's take the wider view to show you, give you a bigger perspective. Let's put this into motion too. And as we do so, you'll see it come out of Clinton. You'll see some of those greens, some of those reds uh, fairly close and tight together. Uh, there's still some rotation to it, and that's moving off to the northeast all the way up into the Harvard area, uh, and eventually toward Boxborough and Littleton. So it's all of these areas, Harvard, Boxborough, uh, over to Bolton, you keep a close eye for the potential of a tornado. And even if you don't get a tornado, as mentioned before with these other storms, you can still get some damaging wind gusts because there's some strong winds aloft. Put a track on it, uh, 14 minutes away from Harvard, uh, Boxborough about 22 minutes away. It's moving off to the northeast right now at 20 miles an hour. So again, to recap what's going on, two tornado warnings in effect, one across Worcester County. Uh, there's also one across uh, northeastern Massachusetts, uh, parts of Essex County here in the Salem area. So we continue to watch this north of the city of Boston as this cell is now moving toward Cape Ann. And we continue to obviously watch this one that's just south and east of the Lemonster area. So that cell, it's a, a lone thunderstorm out there in northern Worcester County, but it's certainly a packing a punch at the moment here as it does indicate that there's some rotation with it. Let's take even a wider view. I want to show you what's going on uh, in the big picture here. We're few and 
far between with the storms, but the leftover cells out there are packing a punch because uh, you're basically seeing, all right, not much is going on from Boston to Worcester Point South. And it's true, you know, a lot of the area has dried on out. You just got this lingering rotation with a couple of these uh, isolated cells, you know, almost acting like a mini supercell or something uh, here in northern Worcester County. That's lifting off to the northeast. And then you got the rotation with the storm uh, that's been basically problematic since this morning on the backside of that main batch, which has prompted a few tornado warnings across eastern New York, uh, then Connecticut up into Massachusetts, Worcester County, and now into northeastern Massachusetts. Uh, I believe looking at this, that the tornado warning in Essex County was dropped. Josh, is that Josh is, yes, excuse me, yes. So that's good news. So with 15 minutes to go, tornado warning that was in Essex County has been dropped. I will say this, though. And there's still some strong winds aloft. You know, as I was alluding to maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes ago, it looked like, you know, more straight line wind than strong rotation up into Essex County. So there's still a severe thunderstorm warning in place. You can still get damaging wind gust, but that storm does not exhibit rotation like it did about 20 minutes ago. Going back into Worcester County, uh, this is going to be the area that we're really going to focus on here for the next 15 minutes, and this is the area that I do expect uh, to monitor very closely as that cell did exhibit quite a bit of rotation in the Clinton area. Uh, the rotation not quite as strong at times the last 5-10 minutes. You know, good to go in that direction versus the other direction, but there's still enough of that rotation that you watch it closely in case it ramps back up and would be conducive to produce a brief tornado. And this is now riding right along that 110 stretch coming out of uh, Lancaster and moving out into the Harvard area. So this is where the tornado warning is in effect for the next 15 minutes as we continue to track this thunderstorm capable of producing damaging wind gusts and perhaps even a brief tornado. You're looking at the Harvard area up here, uh, probably about 10 or 15 minutes away, and in Boxborough too, uh, they are along 111. So where 110 meets up with 111 in this area, you need to be in your safe spot. Uh, you want to be away from doors and windows, interior part of the house, uh, lowest level. Uh, if you can, you know, preferably a basement, uh, because even if, you know, there's no tornado, you still have the potential of damaging wind gusts. But obviously the concern is with the tornado warning that the rotation can ramp up strong enough and produce a brief tornado. Tends to be the characteristic of these landfalling tropical systems. You get on the right side of the track, you get into the tropical air mass, there's still a lot of rotation, and the tropical downpours that move through were left over from the remnants of Fred. So we're still battling that uh, outside early this afternoon. I want to take that wider look again, show you what's going on. Let's outline that tornado warning again uh, across uh, the northern half of Worcester County or the northern section, northeastern section of parts of Worcester County here. You can see this is just to the north of Hudson, uh, the main area of focus south and east of Lemonster. There's a polygon that does include Boxborough uh, back over uh, to Harvard. Uh, this is what we are tracking, you know, along 111 and 110 up into that area. So it's this area of rotation on the backside that was ramped up a little bit in Clinton, to say the least. Uh, you know, then, you know, diminished just slightly after that. But there's that back and forth of like, intensity uh, in terms of the velocity scans coming on in. So you're wary of that. Uh, you, you watch these storms really close uh, in case they ramp up again. So the tornado warning comes out. This storm had rotation, and it continues to show signs of rotation as it moves off to the north and to the east. Now, we'll track this along for the next, you know, 13 minutes for the warning, and then after that, we'll see if it still has rotation or wind damage potential, or the National Weather Service, you know, may either issue a severe thunderstorm warning, and they could extend the warning, you know, to other locations farther north and east, or if the rotation doesn't look as strong and the winds aloft don't look as strong, uh, then, you know, the warning expires or is canceled just like it was uh, up across the North Shore. Uh, right now, you're still seeing some brighter colors aloft. Harvard area, again, where 111 meets up with 110. There's your bright colors coming in on the red. Uh, the green's not so vivid on the backside. Uh, if you do put this into motion, uh, you'll notice that there were more greens uh, back in the Clinton area than at the present moment, but that doesn't mean it can't ramp up briefly again as it travels uh, just south of Route 10, uh, heading up to where 110 connects with 111 up there uh, into the Harvard area. So I'm going to go back to you guys. Have you guys seen, uh, hearing any reports of any damage anywhere? You know, we're checking. We're not seeing uh, any reports uh, of any damage. So that that is good news. But I, I was curious. I, I'm sure a lot of people at home watching, you, we see these tornado warnings pop up. We see them go away. At times you had two, then it's back down to one. Can you talk more about what specifically has to happen what conditions like have to happen to fall into place for them to say, okay, this is a tornado warning? 
So what you're going to look at is you're going to look at the velocity uh, on the radar. You know, a lot of times we're looking at the radar saying, all right, downpour moving through, thunderstorm moving through, and you're seeing where the precipitation is most intense. Uh, radar is a great tool. You can also see uh, the velocity of, you know, how fast are the winds going in one direction, how fast are they going in another direction. When you start getting wind speeds in opposite directions, you, you know, they, they might be, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour one direction and considerably different in another direction. That indicates that there is enough velocity in different directions, that there's enough rotation, that the capabilities are there for these thunderstorms to produce tornadoes. When you look at the environment overall of what's conducive to produce tornadoes, tropical systems, you know, hands down, you see a lot of that. Uh, even when they're not still a tropical depression or a tropical storm, you know, this is just the remnants of Fred. That just is, means the core of the system doesn't have the sustained winds uh, that it did, you know, a day or two ago. But what's essential to it, it still has a very high humidity. Uh, it still has a tropical amount of moisture that's produced in those downpours. It leaves you with these low cloud bases because the dew point levels are sky high. Uh, so there's not as much room from, you know, the ground to the cloud base because the cloud bases are lower. And then on top of that, you get these winds out of the south. They curve more, you know, uh, they, and they curve as they go up aloft. Uh, and as they, they curve going up aloft, and they're strong, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour, you get the spin to the atmosphere. So you get this warm, humid air, quickly rise, spin up quickly, and you can basically get a quick tornado. You know, we've seen that at times. Uh, northeastern Connecticut earlier today, there was likely a tornado that was south of the Webster area. Uh, that possible tornado, that likely tornado uh, then looked like it was possible to produce one in Webster and Oxford. Uh, that warning wound up expiring uh, or getting canceled there as the rotation came on down. You're looking at that rotation back into northern Worcester County. Uh, right now, I think that one is the one to watch. You know, this stuff that you see essentially across northeast in Massachusetts at the moment has ramped on down. That's why the tornado warning was canceled uh, for northeastern Massachusetts. So this is the one to really hone in on uh, right around the Harvard area here, northeastern Worcester County. Here's your route two to the north of Harvard. Uh, this is 111 coming out of Boxborough uh, back toward 110 in Harvard. You still see those greens uh, showing up. You know, what would be concerning uh, is if those lighter greens start to really tighten up next to those, those reds. And there is still enough rotation that this storm is concerning uh, across northern Worcester County. Not quite seeing, you know, a vivid green uh, next to the red, but what's happening is even when you get some strong general uh, broad rotation, if the tornado warning's in effect, it's for the potential of this thunderstorm capable of producing uh, a tornado. So in, it's tricky in an atmosphere like this when it's so humid, uh, you get so much spin to the atmosphere, you know, even if the rotation isn't quite strong enough at the moment, it may change in three minutes or five minutes. So the tornado warning's up, and you carefully watch these scans of the velocities and what's going on as we traverse through, you know, the next five, 10, 15 minutes. And this goes, you know, out of the Clinton area, you know, through uh, Harvard and eventually in to Littleton. So that tornado warning until 145 Harvard uh, back into Littleton. Those are the areas really to watch here uh, over the next, let's say, seven or eight minutes. Uh, and then perhaps there beyond, you know, if there does have enough rotation uh, to extend farther off to the northeast. Uh, if the rotation is, is muted, uh, then you may see the warning expire and nothing else uh, reoccur. So you watch this very closely, but it really is that Harvard area right now. Let's zoom in on the backside of this storm system. Uh, I want to show you what's going on uh, in that Harvard area, as you do see some of the... Uh, the, the the rotation that's brought it right in this area between 110 and 111, these you know roads that I've been mentioning uh, quite a bit over the last uh, 15 minutes or so. Lancaster, uh, you're good uh, right now. Uh, that storm's now off to the northeast of you. Uh, it's more of a concern in, in the north, the northern side uh, of this warning from Harvard, uh, whether it's 110, uh, 111, or if you go north within the next five or 10 minutes, we're going to be watching this moving into the Littleton area. Uh, and south side of air as well. So you got Route 2 right here. This is going to be crossing Route 2. Here's your 495 uh, just south of Littleton. So watching this as well, 495, you're under the tornado warning as well as Boxborough because the cell continues its journey off to the northeast. So it's essentially very close to where Route 2 and 495 meet up, then along Route 2 heading out toward Shirley. Uh, so it's this area that you're concerned with, especially within the next five or 10 minutes. I'd say you be in the safe spot. You know, you want to be away from doors and windows. Uh, you want to be in an interior part of the house and the lowest level of the, or the, lowest level of the building uh, that you're in. 
when you get a tornado warning. So we're watching the strong winds aloft as well. Uh, so even if you don't get you know, a tornado to touch down, these thunderstorms have been capable of producing some gusts uh, 50 to 60 miles an hour. Another look at the velocity scan. want to widen this out just a little bit just to show you some of the rotation uh, that's ongoing across the area. Uh, uh, fortunately, you know, at the moment, it doesn't look quite as pronounced uh, as it did uh, a little earlier, but you can still see that spin. Uh, follow that couplet. I mean, you can see that spinning there. So that is the concern, you know, going forward. That at any moment, uh, that it's the velocity that can that can ramp up. You know, that couplet. When I say couplet, I mean winds going in opposite directions. Uh, and when they tightens up, it's conducive to produce a brief tornado. And the concern is that there's enough rotation, there's enough spin. You can see that on this loop. Uh, that yeah, indeed, it could produce a tornado at a moment's notice. So you get these tornado warnings that are in effect. Uh, you take cover, you take it seriously. They may only be brief in terms of any tornado that they produce, but they can do damage. Uh, you know, we've seen that in the past, these brief tornadoes, whether it was Webster a couple summers ago, you know, you think back to the Revere one that we had or some of these other isolated brief tornadoes. Uh, you got to take it serious, you know, get in your safe spot. Uh, you ride out the storm and uh, we just follow along the warnings and just, you know, keep going as these storms progress off to the northeast. So a uh, most concerning aspect of the storm over Harvard right now, uh, it's going to be moving into Littleton, moving Moving into the Boxborough area as it continues to move off to the northeast at about 20 miles per hour. So let's see if we can put a storm track on that. See what we've got going on uh, here uh, as well with that motion off to the to the northeast at about 20 miles an hour. You're watching that move off to the northeast. Uh, looks like Littleton about 15 minutes, 13 minutes away. Westford about 20 minutes away. So you're going to watch that continue to move off to the north, uh, northeast at about 20 miles an hour. So we'll continue to watch this to see if that warning gets extended uh, any any farther beyond where it is right now. But uh, you know, out of the two storms that are going on, the North Shore storm uh, and, and this one into northeastern Worcester County and uh, getting close to the western edges of Middlesex County, the one that's more concerning right now. Uh, tends to be the one here out near the Harvard area. So you know, continuing to watch this near Route 2, uh, 110 as well, 111 as well in the Harvard area, pushing up into Littleton. Uh, if anything else, you know, there's some strong winds aloft, especially near Harvard, uh, some tropical light downpour, some thunder lightning crossing the Route 2 area. So uh, close eye on it over the next four minutes as that tornado warning is in effect until 145. Let's take a broader view of what's going on in general. Is this something that we're going to continue to see, you know, all day long? I, I think in general, uh, you know, many locations are winding this event down because if you take a look at the wider scan, uh, you can see, you know, yeah, there are downpours out of Cape, Turo, up toward Provincetown. Uh, we have those downpours that are along the immediate uh, North Shore now moving across Cape Ann. But the other storms are widely scattered, more hit and miss. These ones are non-severe back through the Connecticut River Valley. So the focus is on this like one lone supercell at the moment, or, or acting like a mini one uh, here across northeastern Worcester County, heading into north uh, western Middlesex County and right along the 495 belt. So we're focused on this one, let's take a close look at the velocities again, and you can see what's going on. Uh, a little bit of green still showing up uh, on the western edges of Harvard, brighter reds to the east. This is where Route 2 uh, is going through Harvard and air uh, over to Littleton. So this is mostly to the northwest of 495. Let's put that back into motion. I want to show you the velocities going into motion and any rotation going into motion. And you can see a little bit of that spin to the atmosphere. Uh, it does, on the last frame or two, appear to be weakening a little bit. You know, hopefully that holds its ground there because that would be encouraging news. You don't want to see the colors getting brighter and closer together. You know, there were quite a bit of rotation earlier back in the Clinton area pushing northeast. Uh, seeing that move off to the northeast there. Uh, let's zoom in just along Route 2, a little bit of a spike up in some of the colors just to the west of the Littleton area. Uh, so you kind of see these things, you know, come and go, ramp up and down. Uh, you can see a closer look here, uh, seeing a little bit of brighter red showing up. Uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. You know, farther off to the east, some of those colors diminished. Uh, right here, we'll keep an eye where some of these greens are meeting up with the red. That's right along 110 and Route 2 uh, here, uh, just to the west of Littleton. As you go across Route 2, heading essentially from 495 out toward Fitchburg and Lemonster. So this is the area you know, to continue to keep an eye on uh, as we track this uh, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. We haven't seen uh, any tornado damage come out quite yet, or at least reports of it, into northern Worcester.
Mercer County, but we carefully tracked the storm to the north and to the east here. Uh, time track, you know, 10 minutes from Littleton, uh, eventually getting into the Westford area. So this one lone thunderstorm has uh, quite a ways to go across northern Massachusetts and eventually climbing up uh, into southern New Hampshire. So let's take this look at this area. I'd say south of Harvard, you're in the clear. Yes, the tornado warning is still in effect, but the, the worst part of the thunderstorm is now north of you. So if you're south of Harvard, you back toward Clinton, you're in the clear from this cell. It's the cell that's on the north side of Harvard, up to air and over to Littleton. This is sort of the triangle that we're most concerned with here uh, over the next uh, few minutes as we watch. And we'll see if this tornado warning does expire at 144 or if it's going to get uh, continued. Josh, it has expired? It's expired. It's just going to take a second. To okay, so here, th that's, that's good news. You know, I mentioned on that last frame of two guys that we were watching uh, the rotation. It looked like uh, that it wasn't quite as strong uh, as it had been previously when it was back to Clinton. And uh, yes, indeed, the uh, tornado warning uh, has just expired. Just been dropped. Um, no other warnings in its place at the moment. So uh, that is the good news on, on this storm. Now, if you live in the areas that we were mentioning, Littleton, northern side of Harvard, uh, air, I'd still keep in mind that the storm is capable of producing gust 40, you know, 50 miles an hour, some hail, obviously some thunder and lightning. So uh, it's something, you know, you want to avoid anyway. Uh, so, you know, we'll keep an eye on the radar, see if any more warnings come up. But uh, at least as of now, guys, the good news is that the tornado warning has been allowed to expire. And uh, as of right now, there's no warnings replacing that. And I think it's important to mention, too, the tornado warnings obviously have been paramount. But with, uh, you know, Fred moving through, we've had a lot of rain and even some flooding. Yeah, we've seen specifically in uh, Worcester all of that flooding. I think we have video from earlier of just flooding with cars on Route 20. And here's the video. Uh, Jonathan Hall has been there all afternoon. And you see multiple cars, two, three, four cars going into an area that looks like it's, you know, maybe a puddle, maybe not that deep of water. And then this is what you're left with where they're having to be rescued by, you know, first responders, the fire department to make sure that they get out safely. Yeah, we can just see two or three cars there, but there's actually four cars that are submerged in that section right there, but also some more flooding from earlier in Westboro. I believe the fire department sharing these pictures right there where you can see them because all those storm drains are clogged and that BMW there obviously stalled out in that high water, but this was at Route 30 and it was closed for a time, but they have said that that road is now back open. Sometimes the water comes down so fast that is, it almost goes away as quick as it right. comes up. Right, and the storm drains, that's a huge issue too. I mean, we were talking about earlier in some parts where you had two or three inches of water just flooding an area and the storm drains, as you see in this video, just completely overwhelmed. You see the water just kind of gushing up like a geyser here. This is, I believe, on Cedar Street uh, in Worcester. Uh, Ken Patton get it, sending us this video. Um, of course, if you are sending us video, just do it from a safe distance um, because the severe weather is expected to play out through most of the day. Yeah, all right. So again, that tornado warning has expired and we'll have complete storm coverage coming up on 7 News at 4. We now join regular programming. To help other people understand this a little bit better. Thanks so much, Lee, and, and, and thanks, guys. Great conversation. We, we haven't touched on this personality disorder in this depth, uh, I don't think, ever on this show that I recall. And, and like you said, personality...